Okay, so let's go under the hood a little bit and we'll look at the important area of elliptic curve cryptography. So in this presentation we'll dive underneath <coughs> the, the basics uh, behind elliptic curve cryptography, especially to look at uh, key exchange, signing and also how we could use it for encryption. Okay, so let's look at how uh, elliptic curves are actually used. So what we have is Bob, and we'll just draw Bob here. There's Bob, and we have Alice. So Bob wants to make sure that uh, the messages that he sends to Alice aren't read by Eve. So we just draw Eve here. Okay, so we don't want Eve to be able to listen to the communications and find out what uh, Bob is saying. We don't want Eve to modify any of the communications. And we don't want Eve to pretend to be Bob to Alice. So what we need is a method to be able to create an encryption key on either side so that they can secure their communications. So with this we typically define this as symmetric key and we usually use AES and cha-cha and, and so on. So the core of this is that we need some form of key exchange so that Bob and Alice can use the same key when uh, they're communicating. Every time they communicate, they could create a new key. So we need a way to make sure that they both end up with the same key. In elliptic curve cryptography, this is called elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman. And it's based on the old Diffie-Hellman method but enhanced with elliptic curve to make it uh, stronger. Okay, so you've got to remember that we're still using symmetric key encryption here, but what we're doing is creating the key exchange. The other uh, method that we use uh, to be able to uh, create, to be able to, to verify Bob, is to be able to sign for something. So with this, Bob adds a signature to the message and then Alice will check. So what we do is that we create a public and a private key. So this is Bob's public key and this is Bob's private key. What he does is that he encrypts a message, typically the hash of a message and then adds that in an encrypted form with his private key. Then when it's received, Alice will use his public key to decrypt that and to prove against the message. And this is good because it proves not only that the message hasn't been changed by Evil Eve, but also that Bob was the person who signed for the message. Because only Bob can actually have the private key associated with the public key. This method is called elliptic curve DSA. And it's a way for uh, Bob to be able to sign messages so that Alice and anyone who wants can actually verify it was Bob that actually signed uh, the message. In the, th third, uh, in the third element of this, we can also use uh, elliptic curve technology to be able to uh, encrypt the message. It's hardly ever used, but the method is there and it's called ECIES. -E -E 
And what it basically does is that uh, we generate some sort of key through this exchange method that we, sh that we saw. And then we end up with a symmetric key which will encrypt the message. But the two main methods that we use for elliptic curve are ECDH, elliptic curve de Feyhelman, and ECDSA, key exchange and signing. This method is hardly ever used because we can use something like the ECDH, say in a TLS, to be able to generate the encryption key and then we'll pick our own uh, symmetric key method. Okay, so that's how Bob and Alice and Eve and how they would use elliptic curves. So let's look at some of the basics behind elliptic curves. So an elliptic curve equation looks like this. And because we're dealing with uh, integers, we bring in the mod of a prime. It's what's called a finite field. It constrains the numbers that we're going to have because we can have very large numbers. And the mod p, the mod of a prime, that's the remainder from a division by a prime, is in there to constrain the numbers that we have so that they don't become too large. But they're large enough for us to define the field or that's between 0 and p minus 1. And the magic of this is that all the maths work. If we do the mod of a p, multiplies, divides to the power of, and so on, still work as they work at in with our normal mathematics. So when we plot this type of curve, we end up with something that looks a bit like that. Okay, they all kind of vary in, in their shape. But that's how our, <coughs> this equation here, <coughs> without the mod part, actually, um, actually uh, works. Okay, so what we typically do is we will end up with uh, points on the elliptic curve. With this, we often start with a G point or a generator point. That's got a, an X value and a Y value. We define a P, which is the prime number in which all of our operations are modded by. And we have an A value and a B value. So there is our A value and our B value. So for each curve, we're going to have this, 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 and this. And we also have what's called N. And N is the number of points which can be generated from this generator point. I'll explain that in a little minute. So what we do with elliptic curve, and the great thing about elliptic curve is that when you add one point to another, you will always get another point on the elliptic curve. So if we take a G and add G at the same point, we'll get another point on the elliptic curve. What we often do is that we add G many times. Or let's say we generate N times. So the point that we end up with is here and uh, we represent this here as n times g. It's an addition of all the points together. And at the current time, it's not possible to determine the value of n, a random number here, even though we know g, generate a point for the curve, and p, which is this point here. p becomes our public key and N becomes our private key. Okay, so that's the basics behind it. We can also have two points on the elliptic curve that we, that we choose, and we can have an add operation. 
for those two points. So let's say we have P1 and P2. We can add two points together to create another point. So this here becomes the basics of our curve. When we specify our curve, we define the n. That's the number of points that are, are possible from the generator point that we've picked. The more points that we have, the better, the more secure it will be. We have the b value, which is this here. So a typical curve is y squared is equal to x cubed plus 7. So the b value would be 7. The a value, in this case, the a value is 0. And the p value, which is the mod, which is the mod p, the prime number. That's what's called the finite field. Okay, so I hope that's clear uh, how we specify our elliptic curve method. So what does that actually look like? Okay, so here is a one curve here, and this is y squared is equal to x cubed plus 7 is our uh, basic elliptic curve. So when we look at this in in real life with the curves that we actually have, we can pick off each of our parameters. This is the name that's given to it. And if you do uh, Bitcoin, this is the method that's used for, for Bitcoin. P is our prime number. So remember we had y squared is equal to x cubed plus ax plus b mod p, this is the mod p, this is the p here. That's a very large prime number. And it defines the security of the, of the elliptic curve. The larger the prime number, the more secure it will be, the more points there are likely to be. The a value in here is this value. And the b value here is this value. So in this case, we have x cubed plus 7. Then we have the g point, or the generator point, on the curve. And you can see here, there's the x value, and there's the y value. And then we define the total number of points which are possible from our generator. So it's not as large as this value because not every point is possible in an elliptic curve because we're only using integer values. So this is the total number of points that we can generate for our elliptic curve. Okay, so let's see if we can see some typical curves. Okay, so here is this curve here. There's the G and there's the P. So let's look at another one. We'll look at what's called, uh, what's, these are the NIST curves. And there's the values used. And this one is very common. Curve 25519 used an elliptic curve to Hellman. And there's the basic parameters uh, behind it. Okay, so these are our basic parameters that we would use to define uh, the curve. Okay, so whenever you see an elliptic curve defined, you will see something like that. So let's keep it simple and see actually how it ends up. So we had that lovely continuous uh, line. That's obviously not going to happen because we only deal with integers with inside our public key method. So if we take an equation such as this, uh, that y squared is equal to x cubed plus 7, mod 37. So what we've now got to do is to find the points 
on the graph which will work with this mod 37. So if we take a point at, at 1, if we take a point at 1, then it becomes 1 plus 7 mod 37. And that becomes 8 mod 37 equal to y squared. So we've now got to find a value of y when taking mod 37 will give us a value of 8. And you can search for it, but it's not possible if you if you add if you try 1, 2, 3, 4, right up to 36 it will not be possible to actually find uh, a value. So that's not possible. So there isn't a point at x equals 1. But if we try x equals 3, then we get y squared is equal to 3 to the power of 3 plus 7 mod 37. That's 27 plus 7 mod 37. 37 and so that's uh, 34 mod 37 so is it possible for us to find a value when we do y squared mod 37 to get an answer of 34 and the good thing is that we can so just let me run the calculator. In fact, I run Python. Just to show you. So we're trying to find a value of y. If we take y squared mod 37, it's equal to 34. So I know for a fact that uh, y equal to 16 will work. I'll explain why in a little minute. So uh, we'll now uh, take uh, 16 squared and mod 37, 34. So 16 squared mod 37 is 34 so if we go back here we actually see <coughs> that the answer here is y is equal to 16 so on our little plot we can plot x equals 1 and y is equal to 16 for our first point sorry, for 3, 3 here, so 3, 16 is 1 point. If we then go to 4, uh, we actually find that y is also equal to 16. Then we try x equals to 5, and the result <coughs> is 13. Okay, so only some of the points will work. For example, x equals 7 doesn't give us an answer uh, to, to this or a solution to this uh, equation here for mod 37. So this is, this is an example here. So we're taking a very simple, I'm using this extremely simple equation here, the one that we've just used, and we're plotting so there's the first point, there's another one, and then at, uh, at 5 it's 13, 6 it's 1, and then 7 doesn't exist, and then 8 becomes 1, and, and so on. So we end up with a, with a, with a dotted uh, infrastructure that looks like this. The values that we'll see here will hopefully be between 0 and 36. So here are the points that we can plot along the way 
for this curve. So let's have a look at this. Just takes a minute to generate the graph. Okay, there we go. So we'll try with a prime number of 89. See what we get. Okay, so there's there's our dots there. So we're using a little method here, and it's the modular square, and it gives us the result or the solution for the value that we're looking for. So we'll be looking for 34 and mod uh, of the prime, and it's basically the square which will give us. Uh, that result. Again, it uses this little method in here to be able to solve for that, and it's the it's this algorithm here that's that's used to be able to to find that solution. So in this case, if it finds a solution, then it will it is a valid point. If it doesn't, then that point doesn't exist on the elliptic curve. So that's the reason why we have. A large prime number p and then the value of n is smaller because not all the elliptic curve points actually exist. The more points there are the more secure our elliptic curve method will be. Okay so hope that uh, made sense there. Uh, the actual, the actual uh, curves that we get uh, We'll obviously have large prime numbers involved. So if we look at a more complex one, such as this one, so we're using quite a large prime number here, and we can see here that the this is the x, the first x values. There's nothing at one and two, nothing at five, seven, eight, nine. And this is the, the results that we get uh, from our elliptic curve point. Okay, so this is uh, uh, an example. This is our, our points here. So here are some examples here. There's the A and the B values and uh, there's the prime number that we have. Uh, so these are the, the basic specifications for the curves. So there's an example there for P, the one of the NIST curves, P192. And we can see here that uh, we don't have a value at four or seven or nine, 10, 11, and so on. And these are the, the Y points that we get on the elliptic curve. If we pick any of these points, we can add any of these two points together and we'll get another point on the elliptic curve. Okay, and that's the little method that's used to be able to give us our, uh, uh, our solution for the, the mod, the square, the square root mod P. Okay, so here's uh, this, the, the Python code that implements that. So we're trying to find, in our case, it was 34 mod 37. What's the value of y when squared will give us that result? And this little method here allows us to do that. So what do these keys and actually look like? Well, there's a private key here, 256 bits, a random number. We then take the generator point here, an x and y, and we multiply it by this, or we add it those, those number of times, and we get a public key, which is an x and y value. In this case, there's the name, it's a Bitcoin one. There's the prime p, of which all operations are, are with respect to, mod of this prime. There's the a and the b value for this, this uh, elliptic curve. And then there's the order, that's the number of points that can be generated from this generator point. Okay, it's not 
as large as this value, but it should be pretty uh, near it. Okay, so that's what our basic parameters are, and this is our keys and also our elliptic curve parameters. Okay, one of the core applications of this is an elliptic curve with a Hellman. So let's bring back uh, Bob and Alice. And they want to communicate securely online. So here is Bob. And here is Alice. And we've got to find a way so that Eve, who's listening in the middle, can't tell what the key is that they're going to use in the end. So with elliptic curve uh, Diff Diffie-Hellman, what uh, Bob does is generate random value B, which will be his private key for this uh, exchange. And then Alice will generate a value of A. His public key becomes B times G. So they, are, they agree on G and P, uh, the G point, the prime number, the A and the B value and so on. And they will pick an elliptic curve and that will be theirs. And then Alice will generate A, her private key, times G. So she ends up with a point here. If we want, we could just use the x value of the point. It doesn't have to be uh, both points. So we could generate just the bx and the ax value and send that over. So then uh, Bob sends over that value and Alice sends over that value. So for the key, Bob computes his secret value times a and Alice does something similar, takes Bob value, x, y value, or just the x value, and calculates a times b. We will always end up with a point on the elliptic curve. So they should both end up, remember it's mod p all the time, and then, and they should end up with a, b, g. a, b, g. So Bob hasn't discovered the value of A and Alice hasn't discovered the value of B, but they both end up with the same shared key between them. And Eve, who's sitting in the middle, can't determine this because it's too difficult to be able to find the values uh, because of the discrete logarithm uh, problem. Okay, so that's how elliptic curve works, and if we want, we could just take the gx, we could just take uh, just the x value if we want, and do it with the spit to that, convert it back in, and then we just take the, the, the x point for our key, and hash that, say, into the size of the key that we actually need. So elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman is almost the default now when you use something like SSL, TLS, HTTPS, uh, certainly for TLS 1.3, this is probably the only show in town just now uh, for our key generation. The other method that we have is what's called elliptic curve uh, DSA, and it creates a signature. So with this, we might have a message. Alice adds her private key and signs it, gives Bob um, or integrates her public key into it, and Bob can actually determine that she signed uh, the message. So what we end up here is with an, an R and an S value. Bob checks the R and the S value to see if it was Alice who actually signed the message. So here we go, I'm using node.js here, and here is the private key, and this is the public key point. Uh, we then create this R and S, and then Bob can actually check that Alice did sign, sign the, the message. 
So if you're interested in node.js code, is here. But this is used when uh, Alice will send some bitcoins to, to Bob. She will sign with her private key. Okay, so there's the elliptic curve Diffie Hellman method, as I outlined there. And there's the shared key that we have. And the final method is ECIES. And uh, this is an integrated encryption scheme. <laughs> so it doesn't actually use the, uh, the, the public and the private key pair. It is possible for, uh, say, Alice to send to Bob and to use Bob's public key. Uh, to encrypt and then Bob uses his private key. That's the way it works with RSA. But in 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 the elliptic curve, we use a symmetric key method to do the encryption. And then what happens? Uh, so in this case, uh, we use Alice's uh, public key here to send to Bob. He generates a random value. We create two values R and S send R over uh, to Alice and then use this this key here to create the symmetric key send that over and only Alice can recompute the value of S because she has been given the value of R and only she knows her own uh, a private key Okay, so in this way we can do encryption, but we do the key exchange or the key generation through elliptic curve methods and then use symmetric keys such as AES or ChaCha20 to be able to do the actual encryption itself and not public key. Okay, so that was a dive under the hood of elliptic curve cryptography.